This video shows you how to install Think or Swim natively on Apple M1 computers. TD Ameritrade has not put out a native Apple Silicon version of Think or Swim for Apple's M1 computers, so their Mac OS kit runs through Rosetta 2. Performance on Rosetta 2 may be poor for you if you run a complex Think or Swim environment and you may be looking for better performance. Thinkorswim is a Java-based program and the Mac OS kit ships with a private version of Intel x86 Java and you can't get it to use the Apple Silicon Java by just installing it. Instead, you can download the Java-only version of Thinkorswim from TD Ameritrade to run with Apple Silicon Java to get native performance. There are two files in the Thinkorswim kit that need to be replaced with newer versions for this to work, and this is a bit of a nuisance as newer versions of Thinkorswim have to be replaced with every version update of, of Thinkorswim. There are six steps involved in setting up Thinkorswim to run natively on Apple Silicon. The links will be listed below the video. The first step is to download and install Azul Java 11 LTS Mac OS ARM 64-bit V8. Go to the Azul download page and scroll down to Java 11 LTS. Then scroll down to Mac OS ARM v64-bit V8 JDK and click on the DMG link. Then open the pack, or sorry, open the file once it downloads. and double click on the package. Step 2 is to download and unpack the Think or Swim Java installation. Go to the Think or Swim download page and scroll down to the section at the bottom titled All Other Users. Normally you'd install using this link, but this kit is for Intel Macs. So we want this one. So this downloads a zip file and then puts it in this directory. Just uh, a note that um, I use Firefox and Firefox will put it in the downloads directory, so that's where it should be. The assumption uh, for this video is that uh, the thinkorswim directory will be in the download subdirectory. The third step is to download the jar files. The reason we need to download these files is that the Thinkorswim kit ships with old jar files that don't support the M1. So we're going to download these off of GitHub and later move them into the Thinkorswim directory. So we click on the first link, 
and hit the download button and then download the file. Then click on the second link, download the file, and save it. And if we look at our downloads directory, we can see those two files have been downloaded. Step four is to manually install Thinkorswim and create the user GUI directory. Open a terminal window. and go to this directory. <coughs> then type this command. Enter your password. <coughs> and it'll give you this nasty error message. <coughs> then run the command again and it'll pop up this message or this sorry this window and what we're looking for is for it to create the user GUI directory uh, this one here so it's in the process of creating this We'll give it a. We'll give it. Uh, I guess another thirty seconds. Okay, and then we're, oh, it looks like it did something. Um, think or swim, use a GUI. Ten eighteen. Hmm. Well, maybe we'll give it a minute. And let's kill it. So the user GUI directory is here and we're done with this step. Step five is to copy the jar files. So we take this command and execute it. So now we're in the user GUI directory. Uh, let's check the directory. <coughs> the directory is 1970.1.5 for us, but it might be different for you. So next we type this command. But we have to go put in that number that we had in the previous command. And next we do this other command. And that's it for this step. The last step is to try running it. So we'll go back to the thinkorswim directory. Then try our first run.
and it crashes. Uh, well, it reports an error message, brings up a window, and then crashes. So we try running it the second time. And we're up and running. So just enter your username and password, and you're ready to go. Please let me know in the comments if you have any problems with this video. This is my first instructional video, so uh, may not be the most professional job, but it might be helpful. Thank you. I just remembered that uh, there's a little material in an addendum. To start Thinkorswim in the future, follow the directions in step 6, though you only have to run it once. If the startup fails again, then it's likely that Ameritrade created a new user GUI version subdirectory and that you will have to execute step 5 over again to copy the jar files into that new subdirectory. Ameritrade will generally create a higher version number, so that's the one to look at as the existing one um, will already have the changes you made originally. I think that they generally only store two versions at most in the user GUI directory. Again, thank you for watching.